Hello, and welcome to the Legacy Education ICB 10 CM Guideline Review Series. I am Tiffany Roach, the Coding Coach, and I will be walking through the ICB 10 CM Guidelines with you. This video will cover the chapter specific guidelines for Chapter 4 Endocrine, Nutritional, and Metabolic Diseases, represented by codes E00 through E89. This presentation is designed to review the ICB 10 CM guidelines that are effective for both fiscal year 2024 in 2025. There is one small change from 2024 to 2025 and that will be marked by teal text on the first slide. Chapter 4 only contains guidelines for diabetes. When coding for diabetes, your codes will be combination codes that include not only the type of diabetes, but also the body system affected and the complications of that body system. You should use as many codes as necessary within a particular category to describe all complications that are present. When multiple codes are necessary, they should be sequenced based on the reason for the encounter. Although most type 1 diabetic patients develop the condition before reaching puberty, the age of the patient is not the sole determining factor. Type 1 diabetes is also referred to as juvenile diabetes. The subset of guidelines is new for 2025. If you are testing in 2024, you will not want to use this next statement. When a patient has early stage type 1 diabetes that predates the onset of any symptoms, a code from subcategory E10.A should be used. When the type of diabetes is not documented anywhere within the medical record, you can default to type 2 diabetes represented by category E11. If the documentation does not indicate the type of diabetes and there is a use of insulin, two codes should be used. A code from category E11 for type 2 diabetes should be appended first, followed by code Z79.4 for the long-term use of insulin. If the patient is treated with both insulin and oral hypoglycemic drugs, such as metformin, both Z79.4 and Z79.84 should be used. If the patient is treated with both insulin and an injectable non-insulin diabetic drug, such as Ozempic or Wegovy, both Z79.4 and Z79.85 should be assigned. If the patient is treated with both oral hypoglycemic drugs and an injectable non-insulin drug, both Z79.84 and Z79.85 should be assigned. It is important to remember that if insulin is given temporarily to bring a type 2 patient's blood sugar under control, meaning that it was only used during the encounter, and they are not sent home with a prescription, code Z79.4 should not be assigned as this does not meet the definition of long term. When a patient presents with gestational diabetes, refer to Chapter 15 Guidelines. Sometimes your insulin pump can fail and it can cause an underdose or an overdose. When the insulin pump failure results in an underdose of the insulin, a code from subcategory T85.6 to indicate the pump failure should be coded first, followed by code T38.3X6 to represent the underdosing of the insulin. Additional codes should be assigned for the type of diabetes present, as well as any complications due to the underdosing. When the insulin pump failure results in an overdose of insulin, a code from subcategory T85.6 to indicate the pump failure should be coded first, followed by code T38.3X1 to represent the accidental poisoning of insulin. Codes found in categories E08, E09, and E13 identify manifestations and complications that are associated with secondary diabetes. When secondary diabetes is present, it is always caused by another condition or event such as cystic fibrosis, malignant neoplasm of the pancreas, and even an adverse effect of drugs and poisonings. For patients that have secondary diabetes and routinely use oral hypoglycemic or in injectable non-insulin drugs, additional codes should be used to identify the long-term use of those drugs. 
If the patient is treated with both insulin and oral hypoglycemic drugs, such as metformin, both Z79.4 and Z79.84 should be assigned. If the patient is treated with both insulin and an injectable non-insulin diabetic drug, such as Ozempic or Wegovy, both Z79.4 and Z79.85 should be assigned. If the patient is treated with both oral hypoglycemic drugs and an injectable non-insulin drug, both Z79.84 and Z79.85 should be assigned. It is important to remember that insulin is given temporarily to bring a secondary diabetic patient's blood sugar under control, meaning it was only used during the encounter and they are not sent home with a prescription. Code Z79.4 should not be assigned as this does not meet the definition of long-term. The sequencing for secondary diabetes codes when codes with the cause of the diabetes is based on your coding instructions that are found in the tabular list. When the diabetes is caused by a lack of insulin due to surgical removal of the pancreas, which is also known as post-pancreatectomy diabetes, it should be coded with E89.1 listed first, followed by a code from subcategory E13 and Z90.41. Secondary diabetes can also be caused by an adverse effect of a drug that is correctly administered, a poisoning, or a sequela of a poisoning. To code these correctly, you will refer to your Chapter 19 guidelines for the adverse effect of poisonings and Chapter 20 for any external causes. As always, thank you for supporting us and make sure to stay tuned for new videos in our ICD-10-CM guideline review. Make sure to subscribe to our channel so that you can be in the know of our newest videos that are released.